that's what we'll we be need to know that we're here. <laughs> One's up. Yeah, yeah I sent it out of the zone, you know, like, thing. Can you, can you hear help us? We're in the negative zone, or whatever you call it. Let us know, friends, if you can hear us as we start to hang out here in the ether. I see we got a couple people, uh, four people. All right. Stuck mm. around, friends, and I appreciate it. We can appreciate you, it. Can you hear me? Sucker down, and then I'm gonna do this. That's how you can tell we're getting old. Let's turn this party down. Oh, yes. Yeah. So are you ready to get this party relaxed? Are you um, ready to get this party you... over with so we can go to bed at a reasonable hour? <laughs> right. Is this a party? What's happening here? Wow. 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 Uh, just the music I'm hearing. Okay. Let's double check and make sure that we can. You hear? You don't hear no voices. No I'm hearing voices. voices, but that's normal. Yeah, same. Okay, good. Sean Vieira hears us. Sean Duggan says, indeed, very fashionably right. late for Sean's to be late. <laughs> um, yeah, yes. so if you were banking on, um, uh, so I think our options were tech, if it was going to be audio or visual or uh, human or flawless. I'm going with flawless still because, well, <laughs> actually, no. Um, we were... Try we Troy had out. to run through a gauntlet to get back to the streaming equipment, and uh, I mm -hmm. as I understand it, there was a series of air vent crawls. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And then yep. I had to like and put a box on and kind of walk around and so under the box so that the guards wouldn't see me. They just see a box, a weird box, sort of walking around. And I understand um, there were German terrorists. There were. That's very exciting, mm -hmm. Troy. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, we were in the Yakisoba building, and I was. I can't remember what the what is the name of it. Yaka, Yakitomi. <laughs> <laughs> Nakatomi. Uh, Nakatomi. Nakatomi Plaza. But I like the Yakisoba building. Actually. Yeah, but now it's the Yakisoba building. <laughs> it is. I gotta when tell we you. invariably do an adventure that is just diehard for mutants and masterminds, <laughs> yes. mm -hmm. it'll be set in the Yakisoba. <laughs> I got to tell you, there might be a missing lunch in the equation. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, wow, you two. Good to see your, uh, your digital faces, and it's good to see everybody who's hanging out with us. Welcome to Mutants and Masterminds Monday. I'm your disembodied voice, Troy, and you would think being disembodied that i would have been able to get into the building that i was locked out of but uh mm -hmm. it's it's pretty airtight yeah. um pretty airtight but uh the other thing i wanted to say is wow we've got a lot of stuff cooking uh we've got mm -hmm. some patreon stuff to talk about we've got some product stuff to talk about and crystal we brought a special guest today we did I was, uh yeah. we're we're releasing astonishing adventures to the moon later this week uh so we have the the author on board, uh, Mr. Steve Kenson, joining Yay. Steve and right. I here in the studio. Steve, so good glad to I could see be here. You. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Steve <laughs> talks a lot about you, and uh, as a big fan, and you know, we were just really looking forward to making your acquaintance. Well, I'm glad I could work it into my schedule. Yeah, nice to finally have you on the show. Yeah, yeah, mm. really, absolutely. I know that you said you were usually occupied at this time, but I do appreciate mm -hmm. it. And so, tell us a little bit about what you what you put together for uh, fans of Mutants and Masterminds. So To the Moon is uh, a bit of a change of pace, although we did do Prodigal Son, which was uh, also a sort of outer space off of Earth adventure. Mm -hmm. um, to the Moon starts out on Earth um, <laughs> and eventually gets you out into space. Uh, and Where in space, though? <laughs> right? It's right there in the title. Um, it gets uh, the characters uh, to a, uh, uh, a nature preserve in Farside City, um, on the dark side of Earth's moon, uh, where um, they get to uh, encounter a very high quotient of, of simians. In this, it's all sharks and simians uh, for the first, like, three seventy-five percent of the adventure. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is all sharks for the first half, and all simians, uh, primates in general, for the. And the middling section. 
Yep, you know, it's all monkeys and apes uh, and giant alien blobs. It's super interesting. Um, uh, our good friend Jonesy said uh, earlier when we were kind of talking about my adventures in uh, getting in, you know, with locks and keys. Uh, Jonesy said um, sharks with lasers. Yes, yes, as a matter of fact. Actually, I believe it's tasers. Ooh. Yeah, I think it is, technically speaking. Wow, that's, uh, yeah, what do you call a shark with a taser? Taser shark. Oh, I was thinking something that's like what a, it is on the tin, you know. A shark taser, a shark. No, that's not gonna work. Never mind. Like a shock. A shock. Right. Like, like a right. great white shock. A great white shock. <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect. Some like uh, you know, you came in from Boston. That's a really bad Boston accent, mm -hmm. but oh yeah, that was terrible. So I'm horrible. not even from Boston. I'm offended. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, that sounds super fun. So, um, is that is the name like the To the Moon? Um, it kind of references a, an era of television, which is kind of a fun thing to sort of reference. You're going to the moon to fight some, some. Yeah, it's it's a little of that. It's a little Jules Verne, you know, uh, because uh, one of the the characters in the uh, adventure is uh, Tesla Girl, uh, who is our uh, resident uh, misbehaving steampunk genius. Uh, who is obsessed with the Victorian era and Victorian science fiction. Uh, like so it. there's a little H.G. Wells and a little uh, uh, Jules Verne inspiration as well uh, for the trip to the moon. Well, people are just going nuts. Over, they're going ape over it, maybe? <laughs> Uh, oh. Sean says, mm. uh, oh, I think Sean Vieira was talking about the uh, Yakasobi adventure, and so we'll keep you posted on that one. Uh, Sean right. Vieira says, I love the miniseries From the Earth to the Moon, so you have an easy sale here. Randall Crown mm. says, uh, interestingly enough, there is no dark side of the moon, really. Well, it's uh, far fact, side of the moon. It's, it's all dark, yeah. But there is a yes. far side. I guess all sides are far, really, depending upon your yeah. perspective. But um, also, Pink Floyd might have an issue with that. And then, um, mm -hmm. uh, oh, Ryan uh, Ryan Thomas Bass says, shut up and take my money. And Charlotte says, I love it. Awesome. Well, right? the adventure's going on sale this week. It's got gorillas. It's got sharks. It's got a shark mm -hmm. man. <gasps> yeah. Abandoned subway stations, teleporting monkeys, alien ruins. Packs in quite a bit. Yeah. And a shark man, you say? Mm. Oh, oh yes. yes. Did we not mention the shark man? He's a shark. Yeah, he's a man and shark. A man. That's awesome. He's a man shark, yeah. Now, is he like a shark body with a man face? No, uh, more of a shark head with a man body. I love it. And so does Nicole Linders, who just <laughs> popped in with an avatar that is the first one I've ever seen on Facebook that looks like the person. It looks really right. good. Yeah, same color hair and everything. Um, Matthew Tyler says, to quote Dr. Evil, I want sharks with freaking laser beams attached to their heads. Mm -hmm. We deliver. It. Sorry, the best we can do is like electro cannons. Yeah, right. electro cannons and this, a man shark. You see that the problem, In this economy, I mean, lasers, <laughs> really? I mean, the problem is that laser, light-based weapons in general, are just really inefficient for underwater combatants. It's true. Good point, yeah. You need the special blue-green lasers, and those are even yeah. more expensive. Light right. diffracts so right. much faster in water than it does in air. Very true, very true. Um, you know, Sean Duggan has a question here. Um, you know, we should talk about the Patreon, I suppose. I suppose. Mm, yeah. um, uh, maybe we'll do that um, uh, after we talk about... So we did, we did finally um, address the <laughs> long-awaited um, fast food... Yes, I'm Inquiry. so sorry. We didn't realize that hadn't released back back in the holiday season. <laughs> we yeah. thought we thought for for a festive holiday treat, we'd give you all happy meals, mm -hmm. non branded meals that make you happy. <laughs> Absolutely, right? yeah. It's just very. Um, these are sort of. It was a boutique fast food place. It took a little time to sort of create the. You know, it was a bespoke um, uh, fast food meal. <laughs> But yes, yes, the new Danger Zones has dropped. Uh, it is it is a fast food restaurant. It's got rules for what happens when you're in a fight in the kitchen and somebody throws a deep fryer or uh, slams your head into the grill. Oh, my mm -hmm. favorite is um, <laughs> you. You actually also included uh, stats for a, a Karen. Yep. Am I correct? Is that right? The infamous yeah. irate customer. An irate block? customer. Yes. Oh man, that is amazing. I would... Her name might be Karen, but we don't want to presume. Oh, could sure. Could be Sharon. Yeah, could be Sharon. Sure. Could be yeah. Um, what is the male Karen? Have we, as a culture or society, figured that one out yet? Like a Darren? 
Oh, you're, okay, mm. it is now. Darren, that is so good. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a Darren that I know. I don't really know one. No. Just Bewitched, really? No, just that. I'm... That's it. That's it. Durwood. Um, yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, well, so, you know, the Patreon is... Um, is cooking. It is cooking, and people mm-hmm. are having a Chad. Liz Court says Chad, and I think I do kind of. Uh, someone yeah. else says Ken, so mm. Chad is the male. Karen says Liz. Um, Jonesy says Chad. Jason Waltman says Ken. Um, you, you folks have to figure this out for us. because No, Ken is the male Barbie. <gasps> that's true. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, but the Patreon is it's doing so well. I mean, we've got oh, nice. 52 active patrons. And uh, we're we're doing a um, what are we calling it a dump? We're doing a dump. No, it's not a dump. <laughs> we're not we are calling not calling it. Call- no. <laughs> we are absolutely not calling it that. I am putting my foot down. <laughs> I draw the line of dump. Yeah. So we're doing a dossier <laughs> exchange, uh, <laughs> wherein uh, yeah, that's gonna happen uh, after the program. And it'll happen always, generally speaking, around um, you know uh, the end of Mutants and Masterminds Monday. And what <laughs> Nicole's like, no. Troy, it's See? not gonna be no. dump. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I'm stoked about that. <laughs> Good boss that has your back, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't know. Jason said stat dump. No, it's not gonna be dump. No. Stop it already. No, no. It's gonna get me in trouble. Um, but so uh, is that true to like stump? <gasps> <laughs> yeah, stump. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, stump. Maybe not. Um, but yeah, so. We're getting that stuff ready. Um, I believe. Who is it? It's who's who gets revealed today? Oh, uh, today should be Ember. Ember. Yes. yes. Today's Ember, the mm-hmm. pyrokinetic member of the uh, Scions. Nice. I hey, am. I want to say fan hi. of fire. Oh, me too. I want to say hi to uh, Rainbow Sky, uh, gay and proud, oh, hanging out on YouTube. Good to see you, friend. I'm glad that you're here. And um, uh, Ryan Thomas Bass says, I like the progression of release now. The TT Codex was extremely useful. I'd love to see a multiverse book. Worlds of Freedom was great, but more in line with the Codex. Cool. Excellent. Very, nice. very, very nice. Good um, to know. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Indeed. Now, uh, just as a quick reminder for everybody, the, um, you know, well, uh, the, you can uh, sign up to be a patron, and you can do that at mm-hmm. uh, patreon.com slash mutants, A and D, masterminds. And we have, um, designed the tiers so that everybody gets a little something um mm-hmm. everybody gets a little slice of the good stuff and then uh, and i'll tell you we're so close to breaching the next sort of uh level of things that at 500 dollars, um everybody gets like literally everybody gets some stuff right yeah more yeah. stuff I've, I've dusted off some stuff from my old seattle game to use in uh, as emerald city content nice. i love it yes. i love it um yeah, and so the other thing that we're doing, just so people are um, uh, kind of keeping on their toes and, and checking the world of the community of mutants and masterminds uh, talent and letting people know that, you know, we're getting ready to do uh, just a big push to connect with people who have been streaming uh, uh, Green Ronin products. And there are so many mutants and mastermind streams going on and people who are having fun, people who are creating sort of their twist on stuff. And we want to know about all of them. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, get some guests, get some stuff there. Thank you so much, Jonesy, for dropping the link in there. Um, that is a very much appreciated. Uh, that mm-hmm. would be our Patreon link, and check that out. And then, um, and yeah, and stop by. You know, you, if you stop by and, and just just check it out, you might find yourself a, you know, if you look close enough, you might find yourself a, a code that you can kind of take and head on over to the Green Ronin uh, store and pick yourself up something pretty. One size Special fits all. privileges for our patrons, Troy? Well, actually, you don't have to be a patron to get this one. You just have to be good clicker. Get to be mm. a good clicker. Um, but that's just the thing we do. We're just so, you know, generous, I think the word is. But uh, speaking of that, uh, let's go back to Mr. Duggan, I believe it was. It was uh, it was one of the Shans, I'm just telling you. The Shans are, you know, <laughs> they're Shawnee. Shans are full of questions. They are full of questions, and they're always good. They're always good. Um, I, I will admit to breaking out into a bit of a sweat when I see a Sean post a thing because it means what, you know, it, maybe it's something I forgot. 
Nine times out of ten, it is. Sean says, um, I know Troy gave an answer to this on the Patreon, but for mm -hmm. future converted entries, are there any plans to update their histories to current Freedom City? I have at least one friend who'd say they don't plan on putting their money up because they feel like the stats conversion is the easy part. Okay, what do you think about that? Speaking um, as the guy who does some of the stats conversions, I would disagree with right, you. That's my yeah, thought. I mean, it's... I, I can write up the background at least as fast as I convert the stat block, but uh, mm -hmm. I mean, right now the plan was just to to take the characters as they appeared originally, because a lot of them are from, like, a lot of what we're looking at are characters from, like, Iron Age and Silver Age or Foes of Freedom, where the mm -hmm. characters come from a different era of Freedom City. Yep. So, like, the contenders are very much Iron Age characters that that wouldn't be updated because they wouldn't really be around and still kicking right. like 25 years later. Right, right. Right. I mean, honestly, that was part of the reason why the Scions are not in the third edition of Freedom City because honestly, the notion was that they're probably all out of action at this point. Um, that the, you know, their incredibly dysfunctional family probably went their own separate ways uh, at some point in the past 10 years, um, you know, there's already, you know, in the in their second edition history, there's already a lot of discussion about how some of the Scions want out um, and, you know, are, are looking for an opportunity to get out from under their grandfather's thumb. Um, so it seemed kind of unlikely that 10 years down the road that nothing has changed so far as that goes. Right. And I also the notion that we are allowing people to really flex their creativity and not pigeonhole like, you know, they're pinning, you know, these things down in a way that doesn't allow for the flexibility and mm -hmm. freedom that really is at the core of mutants and masterminds to me is a that's a legit situation. And, uh, you know, and I definitely appreciate that. But I also understand, you know, Duggan, um, the moment I love it when we have an answer and I especially love it when we are um, able to tell you no I'm just kidding that's a joke I'm kidding. <laughs> um, I, I but uh, but do this is why Troy isn't in customer service <laughs> right mm -hmm. I'm just in relationship building um, let's see yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's some great comments here um, uh, on the subject of fast food I'm still waiting to see a villain called the pit master complete with barbecue themed dominions and a lair called the smokehouse yeah that um you know matthew i'm starving and that helps mm. that helps a lot um let's see uh Just jason making some notes real quick yeah you had right jason waltman says one thing i would enjoy running a low level pulp adventure uh capped to level five okay mm -hmm. that's really low level but yeah i mean i still think that would be like a lot of fun Mm -hmm. It's yeah. it's very niche. I mean, we are planning to do some low level, like street level adventures mm -hmm. later this year, but those are probably going to be. I'm, I was thinking around player or PL seven because it's heroes mm -hmm. just getting their start. Yeah, uh, five would be a fun pulp level, but it would, it would, and you could do some interesting yeah. PL five stuff, especially if um, you. Um, bump up the power points the characters get a little mm -hmm. bit but keep the power level low yeah you definitely uh, you definitely need to work in like focus in on your niche protection make sure yeah, you know definitely. everybody's got like you a couple of unique skills or advantages and then mm -hmm. opponent wise like at that power level at that power level everyday criminals are a pretty big threat mm -hmm. that's true there are moments um, during the stream yeah. where I just sit and I just look at your digital faces <laughs> and just soak in this whole process. I absolutely love it. Um, I, I didn't want to yeah. interrupt, but uh, I do want to say Owen Casey Stevens, um, yeah, who, you know, the the uh, star of Thursday um, with Owen Casey Stevens. Mm. Wait, the Owen Casey Stevens, the nicest, nicest man, man in gaming? Yep, the nicest mm -hmm. man in gaming. That's it. That's the guy. He says, the pitmaster orders assassinations by calling for his minions to take out someone. His attacks are mostly... <laughs> His attacks are mostly drive throughs Oh, mm. every assassination comes with a side of coal slay. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is so good. I mean, th there must be some kind of a of a daytime Emmy for streamers, right? Because I think we qualify for some awards. No, we really no, don't. No. We really don't. <laughs> you do not want there to be awards for puns. I no. 
oh you know let's not encourage that shall we there is a porn a porn pun a porn (laughs) what am i even saying pornography pornography Mm -hmm. contest in uh vegas and um they all get together and they do get an award so maybe i'll submit a video um and see see how we do uh, would you like, oh, and Casey Stevens, would you like to be fried for that? Uh, that's so mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. This is fantastic. Someone says, I want to take on the mad scientists. That's Jason Waltman. And uh, Liz, of course, yeah. uh, saying, you know, well done, Owen oh, Casey Stevens. Feeding the beast as <laughs> well, a Well, more of a medium rare, but. <laughs> <laughs> this is so good. Oh, Charlotte, that's a good idea. Charlotte says, need a pun counter on the screen. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> We will just call Again, it. that will only encourage the puns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. You, yeah. I mean, do you, do you want more puns? Because this is how you get more puns. Mm-hmm. I love this. So Game Master Toolbox over on uh, watching via YouTube said, would Pitmaster be low and slow or hot and fast? <laughs> low and slow, obviously. Low and slow, right. yeah. Uh, Game Master, this is Pitmaster, really... not freaking Hot Dog Master. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, Game Master Toolbox, um, you had mentioned that audio was a little low. I slid some dials and done some twiddling here to tell me if that <laughs> sounds better. Um, let's see. Uh, Randall Cramp says, the very basic rule to remember with the m M&M and product lines is that the world mm-hmm. of freedom is a growing entity. True that. It changes yeah. and the characters grow as the years go on. and. Comics mm-hmm. have far more conservative rate of age for characters if they grow at all. That being said, each and every one of you who runs the game, that is now your world, and you get to decide how things are, and if you want to go mm-hmm. Silver Age, uh, mm-hmm. those characters will still be active. And, yeah, that's really, really – that 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 sums it up. That is the that is the very nature of what we're trying to do, so I appreciate that, Randall. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Charlotte says, uh, well, I'm not sure what that refers to, but I'm sure it's something great. And um, – <laughs> And the Punny Award. Okay, Jason, I like that. The Punny Award. Okay. I, I just, um, if there was an award, would it be for puns or just like general program excellence? Um, I'm not, yeah, I'm not really. Mm-hmm. Well, the two are definitely yeah, mutually we're, we're, exclusive. We're definitely excluded from program excellence. <laughs> <laughs> like on so many different levels. <laughs> I cross discipline boo on that for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. We've got uh, Owen Casey Stevens back with the villain, the meat villains, I guess, is our, our thing today. Um, uh, let's see, hot dog master, prepare to see the horror mm-hmm. of how the sausage is made. <sighs> Owen really, Owen really wants us to come and watch his stream, doesn't he? He, he really, really does. does. Yeah, he definitely does. It sounds like my <laughs> volume has dropped. My we could, like we could come up with some suggestions. We could definitely go to Owen's stream and help him along. I think mm-hmm. that you might want to. <laughs> yeah, Owen definitely does. You know, and it is. I gotta say to everybody who hasn't checked out Thursday, it is one of those things where. You know, I've said it before. The man is unflappable. Mm-hmm. It's just, it is really difficult to cause grief to him. A great many have tried to flap him and he, without yeah, success. No way. He will not flap. He refuses to flap. Um, thank you, Sean. I'm working on that. Who knows what's going on? Not me. Mm-hmm. I'm only here and to be obnoxious. Speaking of, uh, you know, uh, feedback on the Patreon, Troy, we're getting to the point where our upper tier uh, patrons are going to be getting the opportunity to vote on some things. Yes. Correct? Yeah. Tell us they about get to They get to vote on the next the next set of stat blocks we're going to convert over for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we are looking at like, one of my personal favorites. I mentioned them earlier in the stream, uh, the contenders mm-hmm. who are for heavyweight boxing themed supervillains from the 90s who have respective weird powers. Uh, for example, Bare Knuckle has bare knuckles. Mm-hmm. I love it. Uh, and we're also looking at uh, classic starter villains from second edition, Rant and Rave. Yep. Uh, we are thinking about updating the Golden Age Crime League uh, so they are like old 1930s and 40s supervillains. Oh, I like it. Yep. So let me, r- for... real quick, so we've got the the 90s wrestling quad. Uh, mm-hmm. Boxing, but boxing. Yeah. boxing. Yeah, but, yeah, 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 yeah. And then the and then we've got um uh that cl- these classic villains. Yeah, mm-hmm. rant and rave. Rant and rave. Uh, nice. They're a brother and sister who got superpowers. One of them creates audio illusions, and the other one creates uh, visual 
like mm -hmm. illusions and blasts. And when they team up and use their powers together, they can just destroy everything. <laughs> that is awesome. Um, folks, um, you, this isn't a vote by any stretch, but it would be interesting to hear what folks might like to you know, vote on. Uh, and if you're not a patron, you better yeah. get yourself over there and take care of that at <laughs> patreon.com slash mutants a and d masterminds yeah, but the, the poll doesn't go up till next week so yeah you've got mm -hmm. time. Some time yeah better hurry up um i like that you know what's interesting too we will we'll share i think that there will be people who um a lot of people catch this this uh broadcast uh on demand if you will given that mm -hmm. is you know the nature of our times and um we are going to uh we'll, you know we'll share some of that information but yeah get over there um let's see there's some great comments <laughs> here um on the subject of scions maybe each member went and created their own psionics based villain team that's true oh, that'd be yeah, cool maybe that'd be very cool yeah i like I, it. I think they could still be a fun villain team the the way they were presented in second edition was very much like these are a specific antagonist role where mm -hmm. where the ongoing story with them is your heroes help them help redeem them and work them through like all of the crap their grandfather has put them through yeah so it's it's like i don't want to take that story opportunity away from people and it's mm -hmm. also like because everybody would have used them differently in second edition to go on and be like, and none of them grew at all in the interceding 15 they were years. frozen in a block right. of ice. And yeah. 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 No, I, I so like I, it. It's really evocative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think they'd be a lot more fun to introduce now as antagonists to your hero high team or your mm -hmm. like, you know, just starting out superheroes team. Yeah, we've got yeah. some folks who were actually uh, where they were sharing what they were going to do with the nope. with the characters, and they kind of shared that 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 is a uh, that's what they'd like to do. Um, kind nice. of the, nice, you know, students at an opposing high school or you know that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. um, oh, Randall Cram asks a really good yeah. question. Although they're weirdly homeschooled, right? <laughs> yes, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah, that's probably it. Man, homeschool kids are weird. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. I didn't get superpowers, but then I went to a public school. Right. That's probably it. Um, probably the pizzas. Pro oh yeah, probably the that weird um, that weird corn and um, it was like corn carrot medley. That was not. Yeah. Good. I didn't care for that. Um, but mm -hmm. uh, Randall Cram and says it kept you from getting powers. That's true, and also um, my lunch lady was a lunch guy, and he had a beard net instead of a hair net, mm -hmm. which is kind of strange. Right, that's kind of cool. <gasps> It was anyway, definitely weird. Right. <laughs> yeah. um, good to know that there are no beard hairs in my corn uh, carrot medley. Uh, Ryan Thomas yeah. Pass says, any plans to tap into that sweet, sweet roll 20 money? Uh, yes, we are working yes. on that now. Are, uh, yeah. I've just shipped over a big set of pawns. Uh, we have people working on a Mutants and Masterminds character sheet for roll 20 yep. uh, based mm -hmm. on one the fans have already started for us so yeah, thank yep, you yeah. so much to the fan community for, for getting that rolling and, yeah and let me clarify real quick just so nobody thinks we're gonna come in and steal it but we're gonna sit down mm -hmm. and talk with um uh our folks the folks over on roll 20 just sort of connect and figure out what's mm -hmm. going on there you know um uh while i don't want to let the cat entirely out of the bag fairly soon we're gonna make an announcement of sort of our plans of rolling that stuff out and yep. and uh boy i'll tell you yeah. um we asked for some <laughs> art assets for mutants and masterminds and chris <laughs> Well, you delivered it uh mm -hmm. yeah uh, t it'll be no shock to anybody listening uh to note that um uh, crystal overachieved in this area <laughs> and we have got gigs and gigs and that's all being processed right now so you bet yeah. and roll 20 is the first place we're going um we actually sat down and met and with we... the roll 20 friends last week and they are cool i really like yeah. them mm -hmm. yeah yeah and we've the plan, the plan all along has been to make the danger zones maps available on uh, Roll Twenty and other VTTs as well. So mm -hmm. we're mostly, mostly we're held back by our own technical incompetence. Yeah, well, you know, and, and the, well, here's an, also the other yeah. piece of this is we're also held back by the, you know, there's um, you got to do a little tweaking of a map, you know, the map that you get in a, right. a little different on on uh, Roll Twenty, but we've cracked the code, and so oh. we're getting all that stuff working out, and so really, I knew we were working on it. I didn't realize we'd succeeded. Yeah, we well, you know, we'll see, right? Um, mm -hmm. uh, but but I, you know, without saying definitively, it will be the best thing ever. It's going to be the best <laughs> thing ever, and I mean that definitively. 
So um, let's see here. Uh, Randall Cram says, could Owen be flapped if he were tied to the wings of an ornithopter? You know, that's a good question. We tried that. No, oh, mm-hmm. we shoot. No, we, we tried that back in the D20 era. Oh, right. gosh. Okay. But, yeah. Yeah, no. we are unfortunately coming up on time. So. We, yeah, we absolutely yes, sadly. I'm going to wrap up some of these questions. We're going to, because our guest has, a, he, there's a whole red carpet thing going on for the release right. of uh, To the Moon. There's got, you know, the, it's, a, it's a, a little, um, uh, you know, a soiree of the, uh, mm-hmm. of the nearly rich and famous. And um, I, yeah. I cannot keep those scene stealing moon monkeys waiting. Oh know, my God. They are such drama right. apes. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> but thank you everybody um for for watching and uh for hanging out sorry we were a little bit late but uh but we made it because <laughs> we love you and uh let's see um Xavier says party. hey go ahead please i was gonna say parting question for steve yeah mm. what power do moon ringtail lemurs have oh yeah Ooh, moon t- ringtail lemurs i think they can project these glowing rings of force you know that either like entrap people because they they fall over them in like layers Netting. or they can just you know use them as like concussive force to just knock people away and they just make them float in air and like dangle from them like a right? jungle gym oh that's mm-hmm. great i totally see that <laughs> and do, do yep. they shoot it from their tail of course i yeah. love it I love it's it. a ring tailed lemur, lemur. I love I mean, it's it. right in the name. Not a friggin' Care Bear. Yeah, that's absolutely <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, uh, Nicole says, uh, ooh, lemur powers. We all need a little lemur power here and there. Um, you two, thank you so much. Um, always fun. Even in this abbreviated time, uh, everybody come join us for Thursday with Owen Casey Stevens. We hang out and we do some fun and try to flap him. Let's see if we can get him flapped. Um uh, you know, the other thing, too, is he refuses to share any of his childhood um, uh, awards or pictures or video of his clogging competition wins. So, you Wait, know, I, what? That's amazing. He is a yeah, he's a professional clogger. I, yeah. I had no idea. Oh, yeah. that's that's actually really cool. It really right? is. Yeah. So make I sure didn't you, master anything in childhood. <laughs> make sure you tell everyone. You know, Owen was a baby born with a beard. So this is all. Yeah. I mean, I'm learning mm-hmm. all this stuff, have, working very closely with him. And there's so much more to learn. So everybody join the stream, um, you know, here in the huge places, 2 p.m. Pacific on Thursday. Mm-hmm. We'll be back on Monday. Keep your eyes open for To the Moon and go pick up yes. that fast food um, danger zone and go to the Patreon and, you know, chip a couple bucks in and be part of the fun it's going to be a blast yep you're so close to starting to release original articles yes Yes, you really are yeah absolutely yeah i guess i guess if there's a lot of demand for it we could start rolling in like 20 year updates on characters Mm. like as part of those articles i didn't think of that that's a good possibility actually (laughs) you know we might post a thread on the facebook uh on our facebook or maybe we'll drop it over in our friends um uh on the facebook group and say what do you think? And see what people can kind of do some stuff. Nicole says, let poor Steve go. And I always listen to the boss. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to end it upon this. Owen Casey Stevens says, the only things I clog require a plunger afterwards. And with that, I bid you all adieu. Thank you, you two. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs>